Hello everyone, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. I'm very excited about today's painting. It is, it, it reminds me of like a ski slope, um, ca a little cabin tucked away on a ski slope. Um, so this is inspired by Nilartsy Cove. Uh, and we'll see if we can paint this because it's a gorgeous, gorgeous scene. Reminds me of my skiing days in Whistler. So I'm just applying a background coat here of blue and you want to concentrate it more towards um, the top and then about a third way down start fading it out so that it becomes very light. Um, I actually want it a little bit darker at the top there, but not more concentrated, but rather like darker. Like that. So that should do it. So I'm going to let this totally dry before we move on to the next step. So my background should be dry, but for this next part we're going to be using like a navy blue, almost black even. Um, so if you don't have navy blue, Black will do, or you can mix the blue with uh, any blue you have with black to just get a very dark blue. So, okay, that should be navy enough for me. So we're going to be painting the mountains now, but they're not like the mountains that I usually typically paint. Um, they're a little bit different. So because they're going to be covered with trees. I'm just trying to figure out how to tackle this. So I'm going to have one peak that comes out here. And it kind of runs like this. I honestly should have penciled this in first. So I've never done this style of mountain before, so this is a learning experience for me. This is why at the beginning I'm like, we'll see how this turns out because um, I'm going to zoom in so you can see the mistakes that I'm probably making. But we want to make it look like the it's covered in trees, right? A bunch of pines and evergreens and whatnot. So I'm just going to quickly grab size 8 and it just has some water on it. And I'm going to spread out some of that navy blue black. So 
So I just used that water and dragged it out because here we're going to be painting pines, but um, I need to paint another mountain. I should have done this one first, but that's hindsight. So actually, before I continue with this one, <coughs> I'm just going to paint the this one here first because this one is in front of the left one. Um, so it's going to kind of come out like this. And I am so hungry. What can I eat right before bed? It's my bed time in 15 minutes. And I don't want to eat anything Arby for the sake of my poor teeth. I need some protein. So I'm trying to, <laughs> to be honest, I don't really know what these lines are supposed to be. I'm just following the reference. Oh my gosh. So again, taking my paintbrush that has just water on it and spreading some of that um, pigment out. So we're getting somewhere. I'm just painting some pines over here because it seems like it slopes to some pines, but they're very, very abstract, like way more abstract than what I painted. Maybe I should paint like the shadowy details first. That would probably be a good idea. So I want to separate this hill and have another hill. Um, because there's going to be a hill on which the uh, house sits on, the little cabin. It's kind of trying to figure out that. So I just took the this color but watered down quite a bit. And that's what I used to paint that thing on, this patch. I'm trying to fade it out a little bit so it looks more natural. And I'm going to take some gray and have another little hill thing here. And I'm rinsing my brush and fading that out. So 
something like that. I apologize if that was not on the camera. I have a really bad habit of taking the picture out of frame. Okay, this is actually coming together a lot nicer than I was expecting, if I'm being totally honest here. So, um, I'm going to jump back to this area up top here, and I want to darken some of those um, original details that we painted. Um, so I just angled my paintbrush kind of sideways like that, and that's what created that very rough dotted effect, which I, I quite like. Again, not entirely sure what that's supposed to be, but it looks all right, so I'm just going to roll with it. And of course, I want to continue with my pines here. There seems to be a very dark area here where there's like a bit of a forest growing almost. So we're always using the contours that we painted earlier to guide us, to aid us in our painting. Mine's becoming not like the black has kind of faded away from this pigment, so I'm just re adding a little bit of black in there. And I'm just adding some pine treetops to this silhouette so that it doesn't just look like a blob. I'm moving on to the second layer down here. Ideally, I would have wanted to paint it along this line that you can barely see, but um, I didn't leave enough room for myself because I'm painting on a smaller scale, so it's sometimes a bit challenging to estimate how much room I need. Again, tilting my brush on the side, and it creates this, okay, I didn't want to do that, but I wanted those spotty areas. So let's see if we can erase that. Yes, we can, okay. So I'm just going to actually, I think, paint my red cabin first because if I don't, I fear that I will run out of room or space or whatnot. So I should have continued this like this. 
and then I would have had space for my little cabin. So now I'm like, should I paint it here instead? Uh, So we're going to paint a triangle. Sorry, I just kind of messed up there. So I had to start over because I didn't want this line to be above the cabin. It wouldn't make any sense. So we've got our triangle and then our cabin area here and um, I'll just add in some details later to separate these lines. I should have just left them like white gaps, but I am a little bit in a rush, so I wasn't thinking properly there. And then I need a roof. The roof is going to be white because obviously I want to make it look like there's snow, but we're going to wait with that until this is dry to add the roof. Um, but in the meantime, we can add a little um, black or brown fence. So I'm going to mix a little bit of brown in with black. For my fence and I'm switching to my size quadruple zero here to paint the fence so I'm gonna have one fence that goes down like this And you can very roughly connect them. <clears throat> and that would not have been possible if I didn't have this detail brush. I love this brush. And then I'm gonna have another fence on this side. And again, just roughly connecting them. So, okay, what are we gonna do now? We're gonna continue with the trees. Whoops. So um, we kind of want to have trees scattered everywhere here. I do want another set of a few over here, but I want I don't want them to be so dark initially. I want more of like a dry brush effect here. So 
So I just, I dabbed, or I, I don't want to say rinse, that's not the right word. I dried my brush, like took off a lot of the pigment on a paper towel so that it's not as intense. I don't like how that turned out. I really like using my finger to blend things sometimes or to even like dry blend because it prevents the cauliflower effect from happening because my finger has no water on it. So it kind of dries it in place. So we need more going on over here. I think this is dry. I hope it is. So I'm going to have some darker pines actually overlapping this area. Van. Okay, we're 22-ish minutes in here and I'm past my bedtime. So we gotta speed this up. I still have to finish the cabin and I have to eat because I'm very hungry. So it's really just adding a bunch of pines wherever you feel like adding them for the rest of this. And I want them to be like more abstract looking, especially as we get further into this mountain. There we go, that kind of did that for me. <laughs> My brush was basically pretty dry, but it had a little bit of pigment on it, not very much water, so I just kind of scribbled it and it created this hazy look for me, which kind of took the extra work out of it for me. So um, I believe this cabin is dry. And just to make sure that it is, I'm taking toilet paper and doing that because I'm lazy. So I'm just taking some black, or I don't think this is even black, it's whatever was on my palette, and just outlining certain areas so that it's a little more obvious where the corners are. And I want a door our cabin needs a door. Like so. Perfect, perfect. Okay, and one of the last things I want to do is just add a little bit of white for the top. So I, I've taken a white acrylic paint because it's a lot more opaque for the roof. A 
quickly gonna grab my quadruple zero. I really should not be using this for acrylic paint, but I mean, that's how I ruined my last one. I also outlined my door because why not? Maybe I should. <gasps> what if I had? Ooh, okay, I just thought of this. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take some of that blue that we've been using throughout the whole painting. I'm watering it down quite a bit. I mean, I have like footsteps. How fun is that? I wonder if it would make sense if I like outline those footsteps with white for snow. It's all right. Didn't do that much, but oh, I also want to put some snow on my fence since we've got the acrylic paint out. Why not? And why not add some to the base of our house as well? But I'm gonna stop there. I'm not gonna start adding any to the uh, to the trees because then it's just gonna take me forever. However, I am not totally satisfied with these trees. So I've just taken some watered down blue and just added it. Oh my gosh, I just smudged the red, I smudged the white. Things were going so well for me. All right, let's try to fix this. So I am tempted to add, like splatter on some falling snow, if you know what I mean. So I'm going to grab <clears throat> water down the acrylic paint that I have and just splatter it like this. I mean, you can't really see that much, but maybe I should add a little more.
Okay, that's good enough, I think, for that, for that part. But we still have to add um, the moon. My acrylic paint is very watered down. So I need to grab some from the bottle. Okay, that's awesome. So I love how that turned out. My moon is a little bit big, and disproportional, but I really like how this turned out. I'm kind of tempted to make my moon smaller though, <laughs> because that's a little bit overkill for this painting. No, it just kind of looks like the moon is glowing, has a glow around it. I'm going to stop before I do something that just ruins it. Okay. So, let's peel the tape off. It'll reveal a nice snowy landscape. Our little cabin on the mountain. I love this painting. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know what you think. Um, would you add anything? Uh, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, comment down below, and I will see you in the next tutorial.